Hello and welcome to High School Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Josiah Stober, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we're in Elida for the first round of the OHSAA playoffs between the Elida Bulldogs and the Canton Wildcats. Josiah, it's that time of year. It's chilly out. The wind's blowing a little bit, wearing coats and hats, and they are in shorts and short sleeves for the most part, but it's high school playoff soccer time. Yeah, it's an exciting time of the year. You know, football's going into week 10. You know, state golf's already taking part. Volleyball's starting up, so a really exciting year, or exciting time for um, Ohio here as we start off soccer right now. In a district that is dominated by WBL schools traditionally. It's an all WBL matchup here in the first round as Kenton starts with the ball. They're wearing those white uniforms with red trim. Elida in the all black uniforms with the orange numbers. Elida starts this game with Isaac Jones in goal. He starts with Gabe Adcock, Skylar Kirk, Ben Osmond, Jordan Sardinas. Tanner Lehman, Eben Jackson, Caden Sturgeon, Mark Troyer, Xavier Doyle, and Joel Martinez. On the other side, Kenton starts with Asen Scott in goal. He starts with Joel Bowman, Ethan Yoder, Hunter Taylor, Marlon Lopez, the leading scorer on the team, Micah Bowman, Carlos Herrera, Austin Chen, Stephen Piper, Troy Brown, and Alex Miller. Ball into the box early for Kenton. Knocked back out, but Kenton still with possession on that far side. Now knocked away by Elida. You like to finish the season 10, 5, and 1. Kenton with a similar record, 9, 6, and 2. The difference between the two is the early season matchup where Elida knocked off Kenton right here on this field, 3-1. to one. That was the fourth game into the year for them as the ball goes into the box, but out comes Scott to gobble it up. Elida will try to get it up early to their forwards up front and trying to play that through ball, and the goalkeeper was able to come out and clear it. Early action on both ends as the ball gets into the box, but so far nothing doing. As Ethan Yoder tries to send this up the right side. It's cut out and ultimately ushered out of play by Caden Sturgeon. A lot of work in possession on the far side. Ball goes out. It'll be the Kenton throw right in front of head man Jamie Bartlett, longtime head coach of this Kenton program. Longtime assistant Jordan Martin right next to him. On the other side, it's Tom Thomas who's put together a nice run of seasons for Elida. And both teams trying to fill each other out here, getting it up and down the pitch as quickly as possible as Kenton's had a couple more opportunities here with the ball in the box. We'll see if they can take advantage of it. Maybe a chance for a shot. Marlon Lopez looking for something. Ball knocked out by Kenton, or by Elida, excuse me. Joel Bowman gets on the end. Tracking back is Micah Bowman to grab it back from Kenton as possession pinged back and forth. A lot of times early on, you see both teams trying to feel each other out, but I'll tell you what, Kenton looking like they're able to get that ball deep into their scoring third with ease. This one picked up by Isaac Jones, the sophomore goalkeeper for Elida. As you mentioned, Teams played early in the year, so there could be a lot of differences of the playing style from the beginning of the year. So uh, both teams will continue to see if they can feel each other out, try to gain possession here early, see if they can create as many opportunities as they can. Ben Osmond over to Gabe Adcock. One touch pass, the shot, it's blocked. Asen Scott with the save as the shot went right to it. Ball still in the box, maybe a chance. Popped up into the air, crashing in. Cleared out of the box, but a good little one two there is Gabe Adcock with a nice pass. Osmond not able to score, but Elida still with possession. Yeah, great. Yeah, great one two to um, spring the forward there for Elida and just went right to the keeper. And, um, but, you know, really a good opportunity early for this Bulldogs team. Elida throwing the far side. Yoder gets a foot on it, Kenton gets it back, tries to send it behind the defense, but Marlon Lopez not able to get a touch. Game tonight presented by Kent Moose 428. And Kent, we appreciate their sponsorship of this affair. Tonight's game again brought to you by Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. 
That's Kent. Moves for 28 and Kent. And that pass intended for Yoder, cut out nicely by Caden Sturgeon. Sturgeon gets it back on the far side. Sends it to the middle of the field. Brought down by Cardenas. Pass ahead to Adcock, tries to touch pass, not able to get it to his man. And now Kent may be a chance to counter. Joel Bowman with it. Bowman's pass right to the defender. Tanner Lehman anchoring the middle of that defense. Slow to get up after. Sending that to midfield. Sends it out for an ally to throw on the near side. Both teams continue to try to push it up that middle of the pitch. And as we see it here, those long balls, see if they can get it into uh, number seven, Marlon Lopez, and see if he can control it and find teammates making some runs off of him. Lopez with four goals and five assists this year. Pass taken away by Yoder again, picked up over and behind the defense. Tracked down by Tanner Lehman. His touch to the outside too hard. And Goes out right in front of referee Josh Cosgrove on the far side. Josh, veteran referee, as well as Eric Deacon here on the near side as that cross goes off the side netting for a goal kick. That looked like that was Steven Piper for the Kenton team. Looked like he was trying to go near post, but just hit side netting. Early substitution here as number seven, Dalton Poling checks in for Elida. Elida trying to send it up the right side. Scott comes off his line, maybe a chance, but Scott is able to knock it away. Elida will try to throw it in quickly. Ball into the box, sent out. Now a pass to the edge of the box. Elida trying to get possession, but ultimately knocked up by Kenton. And Ethan Yoder will try to counter. Yoder up the right. Yoder still with possession. And he's closed off nicely by Tanner Lehman. Junior defender's done a nice job asserting himself. Yeah, senior captain Ethan Yoder did a great job of setting that ball and continued to find the ball at his feet. Get an opportunity here. And once again, that's Joel Bowman side netting there, but another opportunity for this Kenton team. Tough angle right there for the shot. But again, it's Yoder advancing the ball. We've seen him do some nice work distributing, generating chances. Yoder, the senior leader on this team. Now Kenton in behind the defense. Here's Steven Piper. Piper tries to cross, but can't wrap his foot around as it goes behind for a goal kick. Piper there with a little fancy footwork as he was able to go through the defender's legs and maintain possession of the ball and just shanked it a little bit with his left foot there. Dean Baumgartner checking in, he'll play in midfield right in the center of the pitch. Nice size to Baumgartner. Trying to play outside. His pass well off the mark and out for a Kenton throw. Miller hands it to Micah Bowman. Bowman sends it down the line. Touchdown by Stephen Piper. Pass cut out. Lada trying to pressure in the midfield, but a nice turn by Joel Bowman. Working to the outside. Bowman's pass cut away. Bowman's still with it, though, on his feet. Touches past another defender, but closing off. Bowman is Dalton polling, and he'll send it out for a throw, allowing his defense to get back. Yeah, once again, Joel Bowman doing some great footwork there as he's able to attack the box here and puts a ball across. Oh, a great opportunity there for Kent and his number 10, Micah Bowman. Didn't think the ball was going to go through, and it came right at his feet and hit it a little bit to the right. Pass was perfect, but Bowman, like you said, just didn't look like he knew it was going to get through. It snuck past a couple of Lida defenders. Kent still with the ball, Stephen Piper. Piper works it to the outside. And 
Piper tries to slide to keep it in. Not able to get there though, and it's Skyler Kirk, the defender, who made it tough and throws it in, but it's cut out. Here's Bowman. And Osmond takes it away, and takes a tumble. That's Jordan Cardenas, excuse me. Ken doing a really good job of controlling this midfield so far. You know, anytime Elida has tried to attack up that middle with a great ball over the top for Elida. It looked like it just went over a little too much of a touch there, but they've done a really good job of, of being aggressive and physical in that midfield and making it very difficult for this Bullet Hawks team to advance. That was Gabe Adcock with the attempted shot. Needed to do so quickly as Asen Scott was off the line pretty high up in the box. Kent trying to work down the right side. Yoder, nice quick pass, but it's taken away. Nice defense once again as Dalton Poling comes back. Poling takes a tumble as Kenton gets possession back. Ball touch to the outside. It's Bowman, Micah Bowman. Bowman with some space, now passes on the ground and sneaks past everybody as Carlos Herrera was crashing that back post. A couple good possessions of defense there by Dalton Poling. Stepped in front of that attacking player. Uh, just allowed the ball to, ball to roll out of bounds and give his team an opportunity on the goal kick. For possession on the far side goes out and Elida gets a throw. They're gonna send some numbers forward before throwing this in. They haven't really spent much time in possession in that final third. A couple of early chances, but oh, they're going to call a foul, actually. So a free kick. This ball sent to the edge of the box, knotted down. Yoder with another touch forward. Troyer here. He pops us toward the front line, brought down by Gabe Adcock, but his pass goes out of play. 28 minutes to go in the first half on the Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard. Five convenient locations to serve you. Visit their Facebook page or go to questfcu.com. Explore the possibilities. With some possession in midfield, they drop it back. And now one touch pass up the left side. And sends it out. but. See what Elida's trying to do, sending it behind the defense, using some of that speed up front to get on the end. Yeah, Kenton will continue to try to play a little bit of a higher line, so Elida's trying to play it into Gabe Adcock. He's been the target of many of their passes so far, just haven't been able to connect with them. Working up the left, this one goes out of play. Looking for a signal, I believe it's gonna be a throw from the corner, it will. Sending quickly. Underneath the foot, Yoder picks up possession. It's Marlon Lopez who had it briefly, but it's taken away. Guys, go to the ball. Yoder pops it in the air. Michael Bowman pulls it down, but got his hand on it. Un unlucky bounce there. For number 10, Micah Bowman, as the ball came off his hand, an opportunity for a free kick for the Elida Bulldogs, see if they can get it into the box here. The captain, Tanner Lehman, sets it down. He'll play this toward the goal on the right side, and no one there as it's just grabbed harmlessly by Ace and Scott. Almost looked like a punt returner back there. Yeah, you could see right when he kicked that ball, uh, number 11, Tanner Lehman, you know, kind of put his head down, realized it wasn't the, the quality he was looking for, and, Opportunity now here for Kenton, is, but Elida gains possession. Now maybe a chance edge of the box. Here's the shot, and it's wide to the left, and now a substitute comes in. We'll have the goal kick when we return. It's still 0-0 here in Elida High School Soccer on WOSN. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's is the premier sponsor for tonight's game. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Quickly back to action here as 
That shot is blocked. It was taken by Gabe Adcock. Goes out for an Eli to throw. Evan Skidleter, Josiah Stober with you tonight. Chilly evening affair here in Elida. Between WBL foes normally see here in this Elida district. Kennedy playing this up the right side, but too much behind it as it goes out for a throw on the far side. Elida finding a little bit more possession here in the last five minutes. Early on, it was all Kenton with the ball, and Elida's starting to find a little bit of room. Had an opportunity on that last one from Gabe Adcock, and a couple of headers fell at his feet. Just wasn't able to connect there. So both teams kind of going back and forth with possession here early. And right now, Elida is maintaining more of the ball. Elida throw on the far side. Sending it up the left. They're looking for Adcock. Adcock's going to take a long shot. And not a bad look as Scott was a little bit off the line, but shot off target and out for a goal kick. Again, these two teams matched up earlier in the year. Fourth game for Elida and one of the first for Kent. Elida won that one right here, three to one. I'll tell you what, this Kent team has had quite a season in talking with Coach Jamie Bartlett on opening night said that this was an inexperienced team. He wasn't quite sure what he was going to have, but he was really looking forward to seeing how they grow and how they progress. And I'll tell you what, for an inexperienced team to go 9-6-2 and two through a tough WBL and non-conference schedule, I'd say he's got to be pretty happy and obviously some work to do. Yeah, I mentioned uh, some of the notes that he sent to us ahead of time, just how much they've improved, especially at the end of the year, coming in winning the last three games of the year and said playing their best soccer. That's what you want to see is teams playing their best soccer. That's an opportunity for Elida here. My goodness, I almost went into the goal twice, but Ace and Scott there both times. The first shot went right to him. And the follow-up effort, a little dive to his left. So still no goal, but Elida with a couple nice chances. Always seems to happen. We get into a discussion and then all of a sudden something happens, needs our attention. Major broadcasting, I suppose. This one out of play. Maybe a wide throw on the near side. Well, you mentioned this kind of team being the you know, graduating a lot of seniors um, last year, a team that was, you know, competing with you know the top of the WBL last year. And, um, so you know when you graduate big classes, there's a lot of unknowns coming into the year. And, you know, so far, I think this, this inexperienced team has gained a lot of great experience on the year. And we see them playing really well at the end of the year. And, um, you know, the coach has to be excited for the progress they've made and, you know, wants to, concede, wants to see this run continue. A lot of a team that has been a bit streaky this year. They lost their first two games, one to Botkins and one to a really good Shawnee team. And they rattled off five straight victories. Brian Kenton, out of a Glandorf, LCC, and Bath. They lost one to Salina, four to nothing, and then a 9-2 victory over Lima Senior and a one nothing victory over Defiance. Then they lost, tied, and lost, and then won their last three, including a tough win against Riverdale, two nothing. And with possession here, Joel Martinez. Martinez, nice tackle to dispossess his man, but it's ultimately pulled in by Gus Wingfield. Now up the left side, that's Marlon Lopez giving chase and a good defensive play to clear it away by Tanner Lehman. Good ball there by Bowman to find his teammate Marlon Lopez making that diagonal run and just a little bit too far out of his reach. As we see, the balls continue to go from one side of the pitch to the other very quickly. So both teams want to try to score in transition if possible. Both teams are doing a really good job of playing at a quick pace. Ball nodded out. We'll do it again. Micah Bowman setting it down the left. And that one's just going to be ushered out for a goal kick. 
20 minutes, 45 seconds to play in the first half. Still scoreless on the Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard. Isaac Jones. Nice highlighter pink goalkeeper kit. Especially with that sun peeking out from the clouds. Standing out as that one goes wide of the goal for another goal kick. Reminds me of all the times that my mind wandered during school and I had a pocket full of highlighters. So <laughs> put the pink on the page, do a little bit with the neon green. Well, I think the brighter it is for the goalkeeper, they think they're going to shoot it right at him. I think that's the, <laughs> point. That's the rule. <laughs> Ball down the right side over the head of the defense. Run on by Chris Villa. That one cleared out of play. Almost gets Cosgrove, the referee, on the far side. Stays up. Yeah, we see some good agility there by our official on the far sideline getting out of the way there and making sure he doesn't disrupt the path of the ball. Physical contact in the middle of the field, but nothing called. Micah Bowman with it. Bowman looking for somewhere to go, and you can see the sun really has popped out, which is going to make it tough for the Elida goalkeeper as he shields the sun with that big glove. It's out for an Elida throw, so over comes Mark Troyer. Touched forward by Gabe Adcock. Popped up, down the left, Adcock giving chase, goalkeeper's out of the box. Ball played toward the touchline and out for a goal kick. So no harm done. Oh, great play there by the Kenton center back. As he was able to go up and meet the ball with his head and goalkeeper was out of position. So if he didn't get to it, Adcock was right there waiting and put a good play there by the Kenton defense. Brought down in midfield and dropped backward by Cardenas. Ball goes out. It's the Elida throw. Again, Elida just not really able to register much possession in that final third. They've had a couple chances that have been generated through long passes. Kent maybe a chance to counter, but a good touch to the outside and clear up the left. Now here's the speedy Joel Martinez. His pass taken away, sent out toward Micah Bowman. Bowman closed off, gets the pass off, but it's taken away by Martinez. Possession back and forth. Joel Bowman with it, and his pass finds a black uniform. Yoder pops it over the head of a defender, and neither team really generating any possession. Elida with it. Pressured in the midfield. And taken away once again. Yoder passes up the right. Overcomes Lehman to cut it out. Knocked out by Kenton for an Elida throw. Yeah, it seems to be that final third pass. Um, that both teams are lacking here. You know, too much really up the middle. You know, we want to try to get the ball wide, spread out that back line of the defense. And it seems like a lot of their passes are all going straight up the middle. So a little bit easier for the defense to clear here. But looked like Kenton might have had an opportunity, or he might have had an opportunity there. But Kenton was right there to take the ball back. Pass knotted down over to number two, Skyler Kirk. Kirk not able to grab possession, and now ball all the way down into Kenton's final third. Before it's knocked away. Sky high to midfield. And some contact, and they're going to say Joel Bowman, the offender. Free kick for Elida. It's placed down by Mark Troyer, and this is one where where you're struggling to get anything toward the goal. You might as well put it into the box. It's going to be Lehman to do so. Knocked away with ease by Troy Brown, senior defender. Cardenas.
Sardinas. His pass, he was looking for his man on the left side. I can't get the number from up here. I think it's Ben Osman. But Osman not making the run, so it's out for a goal kick. Brown puts it back into play. Yoder cuts it out. Yoder taking on the defender. Touch pass over to his left is Villa. Shot by Yoder, but right into the paws of Isaac Jones. Looks like Yoder might have blown a tire there as one of his boots came off as he took that shot. He's running around with it in his hand, but a great run there by Kenton as you know, a couple one-twos and got an opportunity there uh, for Yoder. Just wasn't able to put the contact on it that he wanted. Good job, Xavier. Elida takes it away, looks for space on the right side. Now played up toward Ethan Ramsdale. Ramsdale takes a tumble, gets back up. Stop the clock. exactly what's happened here. There were substitutions, but the clock stopped, and that doesn't happen for substitutions. So there's got to be something extra that happened. Josh Cosgrove on the far side talking with Tom Thomas. Not sure if they called it an injury, and one of the subs had to come on. I didn't see anybody down or taking a knee anywhere, so. Skyler Kirk's coming off the pitch. Mackenzie, your mom wants you. All right, so a quick change to the roster I have. It's Gutekunst, number two up top. Just came off the pitch. Austin Budikus, the freshman forward. Oh, great ball through by this Kenton team. Good tackle there by number 11 for Elida Tanner Lehman, but corner opportunity for this Kenton team. Just the second corner of this one. Both in favor of Kenton. This one will be from the near side, the last one from the far side. Austin Chen puts it down. Four guys at the edge of the box for Kenton. This one way over the head of everybody and not a down and away, but Kenton still with possession. Maybe a chance developing, it's dropped back. This is Bowman. Ball sky high, takes a weird hop, and Kenton with some illegal contact. I think it's Carlos Herrera trying to shield his man, and just a little too much, says Josh Cosgrove. Ball cleared forward. Elida trying to get on the end, and they do with Ben Osman. Osman. Still with possession, gets around a man. Now the cross edge of the box, trying to bring it down was Evan Jackson. Lida still though, not able to get much in terms of chances at the edge of the box. Sturgeon tries to pass it forward. Now Elida still with possession. And only momentarily, it's taken away. Hunter Taylor knocks it to the other side of the pitch and ultimately out for a throw. Elida does though quickly. Ball out, last touch by Elida. Bowman's throw finds its way to Marlon Lopez, but Elida just able to get it away. Looked a bit more dangerous though than people were giving it credit for. Maybe that's just me trying to make something out of nothing. <laughs> Who knows? never know which way that ball will bounce sometimes and looked like it was falling right to number seven Marlon Lopez feed and 
And a good job once again by this Bulldog defense. It's back four really standing tall on a lot of these throw-ins and corners and doing a good job and getting throw here on the far corner. If Yoder can send this one into the box and generate a chance, he's gonna start on the track. Yoder runs up, he will send this to the middle of the box and the shot popped up in the air. Did it take a touch? It did not, so it's out for a goal kick. Some substitutes will come in and we will be right back. Just over 11 minutes remaining, it's high school playoff soccer on WOSN. Tonight's goal sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. No goals yet on the board. Between Kenton and Elida here at Elida Middle School. Great facility for high school playoff soccer. That's where I think I've found myself in the middle of October, the last no, eight years or so. Ball in midfield, Elida pops it up to the right. Jackson gives chase, he has it. Loses it momentarily, but gets it back. Finds a little space, now crosses, top of the box. Maybe a chance, but it's closed out. Ball's still in the box. As Kenton trying to clear it away, finally knocked away. Defense there by Carlos Herrera. Leave Austin Chen in there as well. Chen clears this one up to midfield, brought down by Stephen Piper. Piper tried to make a run, it was knocked away. Now Marlon Lopez runs over. Lopez has it taken away. Nice tackle there by Joel Martinez, and now a man goes down and a little slow to get up, but it will be a free kick from a relatively dangerous position. Maybe a chance for Elida. Yeah, neither team really has had really clear opportunities to score, so this might be one of the best opportunities for Elida. See if they can get some bodies in the box. See if they can get ahead on this ball. It's Martinez to take. Martinez waits, four men on the back post to low driving. And just over the bar, off the head of Elida. Nice chance there. Nice low driving, free kick taken. Really the best opportunity of the night for Elida so far. And you really gotta take advantage of those few opportunities you get, especially this time of year in tournament. Both teams are doing a good job defensively of making it difficult really to get the, the attackers a whole lot of space. So you know, great opportunity for Elida to see if they can benefit here, but good takeaway for this Kenton team. Joel Bowman taking it away, and now with Marlon Lopez. Lopez touches off for Chris Villa. Villa looks for Lopez. Lopez around a defender. Got a whistle here. like they called it early on in the first pass, maybe a little bit of late contact by the Elida defender, so opportunity here for Kenton. Like, they had advantage if they wanted it, I'm not too sure why it got brought back, but either way, a free kick near midfield. This is Troy Brown to take it. Brown with the low driver right to the goalkeeper. Sometimes, like you said earlier, they take funny hops with that one right into the paws of Isaac Jones. Really strong leg there. You wouldn't, wouldn't really expect a, a hard shot from that point. And got another foul here on Kenton, but good shot and an opportunity for Eli to see if they can put the ball deep into Kenton territory. Hard contact as well, just over seven minutes to play in the half. Free kick. Knocked away by Bowman. Knotted up in the air by Dalton. Polling. 
Bowling chases it down. Pops this up and out of play. And we're seeing that sun be a little bit difficult for some of the players to judge the ball here. It's shining right in their face. And, you know, we have to say, though, this fall has been really good weather for not only soccer, but you know, football. And you know, now it's, you know, last week or so is where it started to get you know, a little bit chillier, but still this is great weather for soccer in October. Yeah, and we had rain all weekend, but this pitch looks like it's, it's holding up nicely. It's going to get quite a bit of action here in the next week or so. And with it on the far side. Player goes down, no call. Play continues. Popped in again behind the defense, and it's out. Waiting for a call. Neither official making one. Still no official what? making one, so Kenton's just going to pick it up and throw it in. That takes a touch off of Elida. Stays with Kenton. Haven't seen the sun for most of the day today, and then it decides to pop out middle of the first half. Now Kent throws it back into play. After a little delay. Yoder with the touch. Cut out and taken away. Both teams being really physical, trying to win the ball. Especially in that midfield, either team wanting to give an inch. And as we see, there's a long kick, and will be corralled by the Elida goalkeeper. So I'm led to believe there are two number twos on the roster and will be out on the pitch. So number two on defense is Skylar Kirk, who was the one taking that ball away. Austin Gutekunst, the other number two, who plays up top. Jackson trying to chase this one down, and it's cleared away by Kenton before he could. Nice job sliding over was Troy Brown. Cool, Lida will throw on the near side with just over four minutes to play in the first half. Still nothing, nothing on the Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard. Almost a chance, still maybe one as that one's shot, but it's knocked away by Bowman. Kenton clears it away only as far as Dalton Poling who comes up to cut it out, but it's taken away by Steven Piper. Right, he's had a couple opportunities here recently in the box, ball bouncing around a couple times, just haven't been able to find the back of the net. You know, Kenton doing just enough to keep the ball away from that goal line. And as you said, less than four minutes to go now. And see if someone can get a, a big one here at, before halftime. Throw in violation is that one was too far to the side, so Kenton will get to throw it in from the same spot. Yoder will throw it in. Yoder down the right side. He finds Micah Bowman. Ball out of play. It's last touched by Elida. So we saw Yoder throw one into the box a few minutes ago. It looks like he'll probably try to do the same from the same spot. Here it goes, edge of the box. Knocked down, here comes the shot, and it's a nice save, follow-up attempt, knocked to the edge of the box, still in play. Elida trying to clear, they finally do. A nice job by Isaac Jones, being tough inside that goal box. Oh, what a great save there by Isaac Jones. As, you know, the ball came near post, but it was really a good shot by Kenton. As, 
kind of had to turn around and uh, kind of whipped his leg around to get the ball on frame. And as you said, a great stop there by Isaac Jones to get one of his paws on the ball and bounced off the goal post. And still 0-0. Zero, zero. Still with possession. Here's Yoder. Yoder to the outside and off the line comes Jones. No hesitation there as he gobbles it up with 90 seconds to play in the half. Try to play the long ball, but it's knocked down by the tall Troy Brown. Lida still trying to work it forward. Back comes Adcock. Now it's taken away. And trying to counter. Micah Bowman. Bowman to the left. And cut out by Lehman. Lehman keeps it in play. Yoder, back heel pass. Nice step by Elida and Mark Troyer. Ball goes out. Three says white throw. So they'll do so quickly. 36 on the clock. All right, here's the deal. You guys are the fans. We're the official calling a stoppage of play here. The only thing you're allowed to do is cheer for your fans or your team. That's it. If you don't like it, you'll leave. I go through both sides. The referee has a quick word with the supporters. So 30, 30 seconds to play here, 32 to be clear. Kenton will throw from right in front of us. It's Ethan Yoder. Yoder will do it again. Yoder into the box. Not a down, maybe a chance for a shot. Ball still loose at the edge of the box. Now finally cleared by Elida, but off their own player. 13 on the clock. Ten. Ball cleared to midfield. Sent back. Now back to midfield. And that should do it, and it does. For the first half, 0-0 zero, zero the score. Kind of a wild ending to the half. But nonetheless, the Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard still reads 0-0. Zero, zero. We will step aside second half coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Back to Elida, where the score here at halftime is 0-0 between Kenton and Elida. Tonight's first round matchup, the OHSAA playoffs. Evan Skilleter, Josiah Stober with you, and Jacob Hot Dog O'Neill on the camera as the second half begins. Josiah, we saw a couple chances in the first half, but ultimately nothing in the back of the net. Yeah, both teams had some spells um, where they kept the ball in the final third of the opposing team, but you know, Elida had a chance there towards the end of the half, had a header that went over the top um, of the uh, post, and then on the other end, Kenton had an opportunity, but a great save by Isaac Jones, uh, getting a paw on, on the ball and pushing it off the post. So, you know, both teams have had some opportunities, but they've been few and far between. Kent throw on the far side as they send it up the left. Bulldogs bring it down. Joel Martinez and his pass just goes out for a Kent throw once again. Scoreboard tonight sponsored by Quest Federal Credit Union. And a little bit quieter here as we start the second half, perhaps a symptom of referee Eric Deacon's plea to the fans to please respect the game. That's what OHSAA asks, and that's what the referee is asking of the fans here tonight. 
Sent back in by Elida. Kind of stuck on that far side of the field right now. Now, Gabe Adcock getting around the defense. That one goes out of play. So a corner coming up for Elida. It's their first corner of the evening. Sliding over to take it is Ben Osman. Gabe Adcock was able to turn quickly and drive at that back line of the Kenton defense and won his team a corner here and see if each team can take advantage of these opportunities. Play this one short and a tough pass back and ultimately taken away by Ethan Yoder. Yoder cuts it back, looks for a pass, but it's taken away. Lida on the far side. Here's Osman. Osman runs into the defense and takes a touch. Stays in play though. Still favoring that right side are the Bulldogs. And still not finding a whole lot. Goes out of play. Elida with the throw. This game will go into extra time if it's tied at the end of regulation. Ball out of play, it's a throw. Coming up, we'll see if Elida can send a long one into the box, trying to get a chance. Jackson with the throw. Here's a shot, knocked down. Kenton thinking about countering. Steven Piper to the outside and out for a throw. It's kind of been the story of the night is neither team really finding that pass in the final third. Both teams able to really attack in that middle part of the pitch, but just haven't been able to find that final pass and get an opportunity for one of their forwards to get a good foot on the ball. So let's see if both teams can break down their opponents and get an opportunity to put a couple shots on frame. Lida working quickly. They throw it up to Adcock. Adcock to the middle of the field. That one taken away. Yoder sends the pass down the right side. And it will cross the line and out for a throw. Both teams a little heavy on their touches. You would think at the grass and slow down the ball a little bit, but both teams are really pushing. That ball up high up the pitch and still once again not able to connect. That one goes out of play. Elida will throw. Ball right to the middle as Ethan Yoder takes it away. And Elida trying to get possession. It's Kenton. Back to Yoder. Yoder with the touch trying to get around a defender. And a nice job shielding him off is Jordan Cardenas. And it looked like offside, no call. As play continues, it was Marlon Lopez on the edge of the box. He hasn't taken away. Now Elida sending it in behind the defense, running it over, or running it down, excuse me, is Troy Brown. And Brown sends it into the parking lot. Brown made sure nobody <laughs> can play that ball. I have a hard time finding it. Play continues at the edge of the box. That one sent out as well. Might be a good chance for Elida to send one back into the box. All knocked down. Now Kenton trying to counter. Taken away. Ben Osmond. Took it away, sends it into the box, and it's gobbled up by the goalkeeper, Asen Scott, who's probably happy to touch the ball after quite some time of inaction. Yeah, Ethan Yoder on that last attempt, well, just too many touches there, especially when you counter. You want to get the ball out of your feet as quickly as possible, you know, especially as a, as a coach and teaching the younger players as the ball travels faster than when you're passing and when you're dribbling. So. 
Let's see if both teams can get a little bit of possession here and get the ball moving. Ryder will throw this one in. Moving up the left side. Touch pass, cut out. Now one knocked into the edge of the box on the left. It comes out of the box, but it's run down by Xavier Doyle and goes out for any light of corner. So a chance here for the Bulldogs to get something in front of the goal. Five guys on the very back edge of the box trying to set something up from the training ground here. And now the ball played and in front of the box and in! Whatever the heck just happened, it worked as Elida puts it in the back of the net and it's a Kent Moose goal. Yeah, it looked like that was Gabe Adcock on the goal there. And, you know, what a set piece. And what a set piece there by Elida. As, you know, it looked like they were taking forever to, to kick that corner. And you know, all the players were, were making different moves, but the ball is let go. And Adcock is on the end of it right in front of the goalkeeper and puts it in the back of the net. So one nothing now. The score on the Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard. Elida with the goal. And one of the most interesting set plays you'll see, but it worked. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the entire, all five of those players started on the opposite side of the pitch, and by the time the ball was kicked, everybody was on the near side. You know, but you can tell, you know, something that they practiced if not all year, and you know, the, who you want on the end of it is Adcock, and he was able to put it in the back of the net. Ball up to midfield, tap to the right side by Kenton. On the one there, as Elida slides over. Ball behind the defense. Elida running it down, a little miscommunication between the goalkeeper, Asen Scott, and defender Troy Brown. So Brown just knocked it out for a throw, and now some subs come in, and we will step aside for just a moment, 31-20 on the clock. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is sponsored by Quest Federal Credit Union with five convenient locations to serve you. Visit our Facebook page or go to questfcu.com. Explore the possibilities. one nothing on that Quest scoreboard after a Gabe Adcock goal at the 32-37 mark of this second half. Lida on top of the first round of the state playoffs. Here's a shot from deep, knocked away by Kenton. Skilleter Josiah Stober with you here in Elida on opening night of playoff soccer. Yeah, it's really been Elida here in this second half, being the aggressor, keeping the ball in the final third of this Kenton defense and finding a couple more opportunities and a little bit more space. As we see here, ball a really good job of working it from one side of the pitch to the other. Opportunity here in the box. And it's off the back of a Kenton player and out for a corner kick. Good buildup, though, as they work the ball down the right side. All the way, about as far as he could go, is Evan Jackson. Now another corner. We'll see what they can set up this time. Last one resulting in a goal. And you kind of talked about it, how they waited so long to kick it. It seemed like the defense might have fallen asleep. And they didn't quite know what was going on and ultimately found the back of the net. They'll do it from the same side. Well, it looks like I think that corner was set up by the previous corner because they tried to play it short and I think Kenton thought it was the exact same thing and the ball went through 
that first defender and found his way to Adcock and once again you know, was able to put it in the back of the net and now it looks like Elida is threatening a little bit here again. Elida had it in the final third, now it finds Marlon Lopez. Lopez has it taken away and Kenton just not able to get anything going. Ball under a couple feet, knocked away by Kenton. Tanner Lehman with it now. Lehman a diagonal, headed away by Hunter Taylor of Kenton. Missed it, these two teams matched up earlier in the season. Early on actually, it was the fourth game for Elida, and the third for Kenton, and it was an Elida win, three to one. Right now, a free kick right at the edge of the box for Elida. Handball called and maybe a chance to take a shot from a precarious position. Joel Martinez will set it down. It's one of those spots on the right side for a right footer. Not too sure if you want to take the shot or you swing it in for a header. See what he decides. Four man wall for Kenton. Maybe that's three, tough to see from this angle. And this one toward goal off the post. The crossbar rather. And out for a goal kick, but a good attempt there as he tried to bend it and dip it down over the goalkeeper under the bar, but just not able to do so. And some substitutes check in to this game. One Kenton Moose goal so far, and it's Gabe Adcock at the 32-37 mark off a corner. Lida with a one-nothing lead. Plays this out of bounds, so Elida will send it back. Yeah, Kenton really hasn't had much possession here in this second half. It's been all Elida. It's once again on the attack and good through ball there. Crossed in and headed out for another corner. Good job by Joel Bowman coming back and knocking that out. Well, I'd have thought maybe they were offside, but referee right on it. And play it short and quick. Here's the cross. Out of the way. Out for an Eli to throw. It's Joel Martinez. Two man contact there. And thought about a shot, ultimately closed off. It was Aiden Kreitz with possession. Now played into the middle of the field, some space there. Lida dropping it back. And it's too much contact there by Marlon Lopez. Nothing malicious, just a hard foul. Lehman sets it down, Lehman to the edge of the box, it skips once. Takes a touch off of Joel Bowman, and Bowman sends it to the other end of the field. Back comes Skyler Kirk, clears it to midfield. Ethan Yoder up the left side, kept trying to get something going now. Chris Villa. Knocked out of play, so Kenton with a throw. We've seen a couple long throws from Ethan Yoder from that corner. An opportunity here for Kenton to put some bodies in the box. And I had many opportunities here in the second half. So we see quite a few substitutions coming in. They just sent in the tall Cameron Jesianowski. Ball nodded back out of the box. Kenton, though, able to put it back to the edge. No one there as Elida clears it out of play. Another throw for Kenton on the far side. 24 minutes. 55 seconds to play in regulation. Kenton with a shot, knocked away. Maybe a chance for another. It's a hard one, but it's well wide. In fact, it's gonna go out for a throw. Joel Bowman flying in there from his midfield position. Got laces on it, but well wide of his target. 
Some substitutes check in. With that, we'll step aside briefly. 24-25 on the clock. It's high school soccer on WOSN. Brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back where it's 1-1, Eli, or 1-0, excuse me, Elida on top. Trying to give away free goals like I'd like free chicken from Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Go Gabe, go on. Well, in for Elida, trying to extend that lead. A little bit of space to work with. Here's Adcock, the goal scorer. Adcock has it taken away on a nice tackle by Joel Bowman. Adcock with it after a hard challenge. Might have taken their time. Might as well with that one goal lead. Try to switch fields, they do. Closed off, Kenton, maybe a chance now. Kenton up the left side, they light it with numbers back. Ball goes out of play. I would like to see a little bit more passing on those transition plays for Kenton. A couple times we've seen it here in the second half. It's just too much touches, too much dribbling on that far side. You've got to get that ball out of your feet quickly, especially if you want to beat this Elida defense. Cock turns, sends it off to Kenton for the throw. Kenton, every time they get possession, they just try to send it up that left side. They're just gonna work it up. Yoder throwing it once again, this time Maybe something behind it. Kenton in the box. Nice step from Elida. They throw it or send it out for another throw. Yoder will back up. Might send another one of those long ones into the box. And he does. Knocked up in the air by Elida. Were they able to keep it in? No, they weren't. So a corner coming up for Kenton. On the far side. Be the third corner for Kenton so far this evening. Placed down by, can't see the number at this point in the evening. Maybe Chris Villa, number 17. Villa sends it up and it's on the ground trying to clear his Elida and they do. And Yoder tries to send it back toward the box, but ultimately off the side of his foot now for a throw. Lida sending it behind the defense. Referee, no indication of offside. He says it was on. Adcock gets there. Defense gets back. Adcock to the center of the field as Yoder knocks it away. Maybe a handball there, no call from the refs. Nice pass up the left side, can they keep it in? They can, here's the cross, center of the field. Maybe a chance, the shot knocked away by Bowman. Shot taken there by Evan Jackson. Goes out for another Elida corner. A goal here would be big for the Bulldogs as this is corner number five for the home team in black. Yeah, what a Great ball there by Xavier Doyle. It looked like the ball was going to go out of bounds, and he was able to put a left foot on it, put it into the box for his teammate, Eben Jackson. Just wasn't able to make a strong contact on it. And another corner here for the Elida team. Ball played on the ground, gets through everyone once again. Elida tracks all the way back. They drop it back to Dalton Poling. Poling has it taken away. Yoder. Up the right side, Poling gets back as Wingfield gets it. And then Wingfield loses possession. And the referee, once again, having a word. 
Sorry, the camera's not on the referee, but he's up at the fence talking to the fans. I think he would like to see one of them leave this game. It's the second time he's had to address the crowd tonight. Back underway. Elida, middle of the field. So footwork there. It's a defender on the turf. A little bit of space. Here's Ben Osman. Osman to the outside, headed into the box. Sent out of the box by Troy Brown. Now the top, here's a shot, and right at the goalkeeper, Asen Scott. A good build up from Elida, generating a chance. And 19 minutes on the clock. Elida doing a much better job this half with their build up play. Getting the ball from one side of the pitch to the other. Five, six, seven passes in a row, and creating some opportunities that they couldn't find in that first half. So. See if they can continue to work on that buildup. They've had the better opportunities here in the second half. Jesse Anowski puts it in play. Yoder runs on the end of it, sends it up to Gus Wingfield. Wingfield with seven goals so far this year. Nice touch to get around the outside. That's Xavier Doyle. Tried to send it in quickly, but there's a substitute ready to check in. Looked like they were trying to play it up to Adcock once again. They're forward, but I believe if it would have made, made it to him, it would have been offside. The official was right on top of it, but Kent was able to clear it. Another opportunity here for Elida. Oh, almost falls nicely to Adcock there in the box. Now to the top, here's a shot and it's wide. A good pass and a good look, but Aiden Kreitz puts it wide left. Pardon me, that was Dean Bumgardner. Good play though as Bumgardner found a seam in the defense and good find to him. Nonetheless, it's out for a goal kick. Here comes Kenton. Yoder on the outside. Yoder cuts in. Nice job getting around Bumgardner. Nice step by the defender. It's Dalton pulling. Poling sends it up the left side, and it's kept in. Cleared to the middle of the field. Bumgarner there, goes past him for Cardenas. Now Jackson, far side. Jackson between two defenders. Ultimately knocked away from him, but a nice little run as he got around two in the third one, finally able to get a foot on it. Lydon continues to be the aggressor here in this second half really kept Kenton back in their final third, or in their defensive third. But another here for a goal kick for the Kenton team. So to take the goal kick is Troy Brown. Brown, the lefty, sends it to the middle of the field. Bumgardner with the height, nods it down with his head. Yoder steps up, takes it away, but Elida comes right back, possession ping back and forth. Up the left, Kenton not able to keep it in play as it goes out for any Elida throw. 15-49 on the clock, we'll take another break. We'll be right back with more after this. one nothing Elida on top. Today's scoreboard is sponsored by Quest Federal Credit Union with five convenient locations to serve you. Visit our Facebook page or go to questfcu.com. Explore the possibilities. Back underway here in Elida where it's one nothing. Dogs on top on that Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard. Evan Skilleter, Josiah Stover with you 
in the press box in Elida and out in the cold is Jacob O'Neill on the camera doing a nice job as always. Camera extraordinaire, I like to say. Not sure, did you have a hot dog today, Jacob? No hot dog for our man who goes by the nickname Hot Dog and for his evaluation of hot dogs all over Northwest Ohio sports. Now a nice ball in behind the quick Gabe Adcock trying to get on the end of it. A big tackle, but it looked like a clean tackle as Troy Brown came over and made contact. Elida starts play quickly though. Bob Gardner, pass into the box and cleared away. Kenton's got to get something going here relatively soon. And I know there's 14 minutes on the clock, but they haven't really been able to do a whole lot, especially here in the second half. Now with Elida setting some numbers back, worried more about preserving this lead. It seems like chances will be few and far between for the Wildcats. Kenton's really struggled to string some passes together, and they've really been outnumbered. Um, in their final third, you know, two against five, six, elided defenders. So, um, you know, when you can't possess the ball, you don't allow those numbers to come up to support you. And Kenton's finding it difficult against this elided defense to maintain any type of possession. Well played down the left side, maybe a chance coming up. Into the box, the shot in past the keeper. A goal by Aiden Kreitz in a 2-0 lead. Elida with a commanding 2-0 lead on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. It's a, excuse me, the Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard. It's a Kenton Moose goal. Yeah, what a pass there to lead him right 1v1 with the keeper. And, you know, almost looked like he was going to go far post, but found that crease there at near post and was able to finish and a big goal for this Elida Bulldogs team. Give them a little bit of breathing room now. Play continues and Elida's gonna have to, or I'm sorry, Kenton's going to have to really get going. We just talked about how the one goal lead was going to be tough to overcome, but two seems like a mountain right now for a team that hasn't been able to get too much in their final third. Marlon Lopez drops it back for Yoder. Yoder drops it to Joel Bowman. Now on the outside. The defender way back. He's holding that man on the far side on. Sliding over and knocking it out is the defense. Skyler Kirk. Sent into the box, but throw in violation once again. We've seen Josh Cosgrove on that far side call that once already today and sticking with the consistent action, calling it once again. And if you're unfamiliar with the throw in rule, you have to throw it above your head if that ball gets too far to one side or the other, or if you don't throw it with two hands. It is a throw-in violation. More over the head, into the box. And a fight for possession, ultimately cleared away by Elida. Kenton starting to get that ball into the box a little bit more, though, with just under 12 minutes to play. Kenton's getting to the point where they're going to have to throw a lot of bodies forward to see if they can get a couple more opportunities on the night which then could lead him to Elida having a few more runouts. But we'll see if Elida sits back in a little bit, knowing that they're up two to nothing on the scoreboard here. They can maintain control of this game. Ball cleared away by Tanner Lehman. Kreitz, the goal scorer, tries to get on it. Leaves it for Bumgardner. Now Austin Gudekunst. Gudekunst tries to send it down the right side, but just a little too tight to the keeper as Mason Scott comes out for it. And it really was the right ball. 
you know, just a little bit too far forward, looking for that third runner on the far sidelines. And, uh, you know, the, the thought was right, but just the pass wasn't on point. Up the left they go. Stephen Piper out of the top of the box. And maybe a chance, Yoder. I don't know if he was shooting that or if he scuffed a shot. Either way, not the result he was looking for. Yoder now touches to the outside, trying to cross into the box. He does, but it's right at the goalkeeper, Isaac Jones. And harm averted by Elida. Winner of this one, by the way, gets St. Mary's, a team that had a fantastic year. Winning a WBL title. First team to beat Shawnee in a WBL match in something like two years. Kreitz will get a rest as he is replaced. Mark Troyer coming in for him. Pardon me, that was Xavier Doyle coming in for him. And now referee, nice job playing advantage. And as soon as advantage was lost, he called the foul, bringing it back for a free kick. 40 yards out. Not for East today, Josh Cosgrove and Eric Deacon. Sorry, Josiah. Nope, yeah, just another opportunity for Ken to put the ball in the box here. We'll see if number 24, Troy Brown, looks like the ball a little bit higher than he wanted it. That's a big boot. Just a little bit too much on the end of it. Unfortunately, in this sport, that does not count for three points. Under nine minutes to play, eight and a half remaining in this one. Ball up to midfield, it's Gutekunst. Gutekunst not able to get possession, and coming up and booting it forward was Troy Brown, but Right into the paws of Isaac Jones. Kenton with possession, but only momentarily. Ball back for Brown. Now played up. Nice step by Elida. Tackle not there as Skyler Kirk came flying in. That pass out of reach of Doyle and out for a Kenton throw. Lida will just have to maintain a little bit of possession here, see if they can run that time off the clock. They'll, they'll be in no hurry to get the ball in. And like many times in the game where you're trying to get the ball into play as quickly as possible. They'll use this opportunity to kind of slow the game down a little bit. Ken, on the other hand, has to get moving here, see if they can get some bodies in the box and try to get back into this game. Yoder throws this into the box, maybe a chance. Player goes down, no call, not nearly enough contact as Micah Bowman went down. Referee letting him know not enough contact. So the score remains 2 0 on the Quest Federal Credit Union scoreboard. Two Kenton Moose goals tonight one by Gabe Adcock and one by Aiden Kreitz. Ball to the outside, Elida with some space. They knock it off of the Kenton defense. Now knocked forward. Cleared to midfield, knocked down by Joel Martinez. And again, we see possession pinged back and forth. Ball stays in play. It's taken away. Sent right back to Elida. And Right back to Kenton. 
And right back to Elida. Right back to Kent. Neither team able and to right back to many Elida. passes together here in that midfield. Playing a little bit of just kick ball in that midfield and falls nicely to the Kenton attacker. But once again, that Elida defense is there to stymie any attack by this Wildcats team. Ball ushered out for a Kenton throw. Ethan Yoder will come over to throw this one in. Five minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Ball into the box, knotted up in the air by Bowman. Yoder tries to get there, cleared away by Elida, kept in play on the far side. And a foul right in front of the Kenton bench. So over comes Troy Brown to try to put this into the box. Brown, another low driver. It's all the way through. Now they would get a foot on it is Herrera. He goes back over for it. Herrera with two defenders on him. Man, too much contact. So a free kick in a dangerous spot for Kenton as time winds down. Wildcats desperate for a goal to cut this lead in half. Kenton throwing all but two bodies there in the box. You need a goal here. Be big to give him a fight for the last two minutes. And Nothing once again. It's a great ball. Micah Bowman got ahead on it, but just knotted it wide of the goal. So Elida will send in some subs. Under four minutes to play. So when the team that's leading makes substitutions, the clock will stop. Straight to Ethan Yoder. Ultimately taken away as Skyler Kirk puts it out. We'll do it again. Yoder still with it. Now he backs up like he wants to send it into the box. He will. Right in front of the goal, but a nice clearance by Elida up to Austin Gutekunst. Nope, that's Gabe Adcock, excuse me. Well, is okay with just kicking the ball out of bounds. So we'll take those precious seconds off the clock here. That ball goes out. Good effort there by Xavier Doyle, trying to catch up to it. Down to three minutes to play. Lida with it. Xavier Doyle steps in, takes it away. Knocked up in the air, brought down by Yoder. Way to the outside. Good chase is Alex Miller. Miller gets there to keep it in play, and now Elida knocks it out for a throw, and Yoder will step over, and try to send this into the box once again. it down by Elida. Yoder slides over. Yoder, touch to the left, into the box, and knocked away once again. Still on the edge, though, as Elida can't quite clear. Now they do. All the way to the other side of the field. Well done there. Brown down the left side, but off the side of the foot. It goes out as you hear the two-minute warning. I want to thank our sponsors once again, the game sponsor and goal sponsor, Kenton Moose. The scoreboard sponsor tonight was Quest Federal Credit Union. The premier sponsor was Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Couldn't do it without the support of our sponsors and without the support of viewers like you. I sound like PBS, I suppose, but we are a publicly funded station. Go ahead. Thank you. Grew up with PBS. <laughs> so did I. I think after school, watching Arthur and all those PBS shows, I thought that I was special. They said I was the, I was the reason 
that they stayed open. You are right. special. Viewers like me. You are. But in all seriousness, we do appreciate our viewers and all the viewer support that we have across Lime Land. If you want to make a donation in any size, you can call the station at any time or visit WTLW.TV. That ball out of play for a goal kick with 45 seconds remaining, and it looks like Elida, barring anything crazy, will move on to the next round and take on the St. Mary's Memorial Rough Riders. Elida will take their time here on these throw-ins. I'm sure the coaches are talking to them about the pace of the game at this point. All Elida has to do is possess the ball here and as they pass it to the corner. Eight seconds left, and I don't know if Kent will even try to put this back into play. It's dropped down by Scott. And that will do it. Two goals in this one. One from Gabe Adcock at the 32-37 mark, and one from Aiden Kreitz at the 13-28 mark. And that is all the scoring we had for you tonight in the first round of these playoffs, Josiah. Yeah, it was really that second half of Elida being aggressive, really possessing the ball, coming out at halftime. And you can tell they made some changes, had a real game plan. Um, were able to attack the ball, or attack that Kenton defense. You know what, and just some that corner with Adcock, you know, him, you know, we we were talking about it kind of a strange corner, but you can tell they practiced that, um, and it really was the difference. And then uh, Kreitz there um, getting that great through ball and was able to finish near post. So um, congrats to the Elida Bulldogs team as they move forward. Elida with their 11th win of the season. Want to thank our sponsors again, and also want to thank the Elida Athletic Department for their hospitality tonight. And as always, want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Soccer on WOSN. One more time from Elida, your final. Elida 2, Kenton 0 for Josiah Stober and our camera guy, Jacob O'Neill. I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.